ladies and gentlemen, this is where things start to get really, and I mean really interesting, because originally, he was just supposed to be suspended for two games, but now it's indefinitely. And to be honest, I don't think it's a good thing for him to be away from basketball, because that's what was keeping him out of trouble. Well, ladies and gentlemen, would you look at that? The man, the myth, the legend himself, Captain Cornball, has released a statement. Oh, brother, at this point in time, it just feels like another day, another John Moran video. And y'all guys know this, I'm not one to even talk about NBA players whatsoever, but we have a new and major update almost every single day, or night in this scenario, because it is going to be a late night upload, and I do apologize for that. Now, for those of you that aren't caught up on our situation and have no idea what I'm talking about whatsoever, go watch the previous two videos. If you don't want to watch those videos, that's fine, completely fine, 100%. To make a long story short, John ja Morant's antics have finally caught up to him. The way he's acted off the court, to be more specific on social media, it's been cornball activity. And just like this comment says right here, it's so weird because NBA players like D. Rose or DeMar Rosen, who are actually from the hood, don't act the way Ja does at all. Yeah, you're 100% right, and like I've told you in the previous two videos, and I know this sounds cliche and corny, but it holds true, real G's move in silence. What did I tell you guys? I played AAU basketball with some guys who were from the hood. They were from the quote unquote trenches, and you would have never thought that because they don't act hard. You know why they didn't have to act hard around me and try to proved to me they was a gangster because they were really about that life. They don't need validation from Matt B. Great. I can't dumb it down any more than that. Like I said, real G's move in silence. It's the same thing with money. People that are always flexing their money on Snapchat and Instagram, those are also some of the biggest cornballs to ever exist. This is common knowledge. If somebody flexes money, I immediately go, yep, they're broke. Because people that are actually rich and have money don't flex it. That's the best analogy I can use to relate to this situation with John Morant. And I know you guys are ready to get into the video, but I want to read you off this comment that somebody put on the last video, and I really like it, so thank you for writing this. The Magician 206, I like that username by the way, it's pretty unique, said this. I went to school with DeJounte Murray, and when I tell you he was really about that life, like he really was about that action. I'm so proud to see his growth from middle school and high school all the way to a professional. He had a little hiccup with the Paulo situation, but I can tell you I've seen what was happening because I was at the game. Paulo ended boys were talking a whole lot of crap before DM5, which is DeJounte Murray, responded the way he did. Everyone's seen that on footage. For those of you that don't know what he's talking about at the end of that, DeJounte Murray and Paulo Banquero in the summer, they had a little beef. It, it wasn't nothing even serious. They wound up making up and it's all good. But I wanted to read that off to you because that person's right. DeJounte Murray, if you're from Seattle, I believe that's where you're from, yeah. You know he was about that life growing up. It's well documented. It is just a cold hard fact, but here's a difference with DeJounte Murray, Derrick Rose, and DeMar Rosen. All three of those guys I just named off, maybe at one point in time, they were about that life, but now, like this person said, they're professionals and they've grown up. Like I told you guys in the previous video, money should change you. And I'm not a person who thinks money makes you happy in this life or it guarantees happiness, but also success, it should change you. Once you start to elevate in your life, if you're a winner, you can't hang around losers, or you shouldn't. They're just going to bring you down. And this just doesn't apply to John Morant. This applies to everybody. Okay, maybe you had it hard growing up, but if you get fortunate enough and blessed enough to make it to the NBA, achieve your dreams, you got to separate yourself. you got to quit doing that. This is what I'm talking about. I want to read you off this comment. So last one I'm going to read, then we're really going to get into things. Unfortunately, like myself, being a black man raised in the burbs with merry parents, I got bullied over it. It's crazy. People hate you for having a good upbringing, and that's what I'm talking about. And today, Today's society, and it's not just in 2023, this happened when I was a kid growing up, for some odd reason, kids will bully you in middle school and high school if you got two loving parents and a great home. Like, what? I've never understood that, never have. For some odd reason, we try to compete with people and say, no, my life's harder than yours. No, my life was harder than yours. No, 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 mine was harder than yours. Ever since I was a kid, I've never thought it was a flex to say that my upbringing was tougher than yours. No, I'd rather grow up in a rich family, I'll say it. Now, most of y'all know your boy Matt didn't grow up in a rich family, but I wasn't poor by any means. I always had what I needed, not what I wanted. To give y'all some context, I grew up in the suburbs as well, but my mom was raising me and my brother by herself. She did a great job, more than an outstanding job, and I love her to death for doing that, but we wasn't even middle class. We were lower middle class. Wasn't poor, but lower middle class. And I think a lot of you watching this video, you're more likely in a similar situation. And I already told you the story about my friend who played on my team who lived in a 3,500 square foot house. He basically lived in a mansion, but he tried to act gangster. And that wasn't the only person I 
knew like that. I had plenty of friends who had way more money than my family growing up, always posted on Instagram and Snapchat like, oh, I'm getting it out the mud, no handouts, and blah, 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 blah. You know how that goes. I never have and I never will understand the fascination of people who have a great upbringing, but they want to act like they don't. And last but not least, I'll never understand why other people try to make you feel bad about growing up in a nice environment with a nice car and a nice house. Beats everything I've ever seen. And I'm telling all my people out here that are watching this video, if you come from a great family, a great upbringing, use it to your advantage. You shouldn't feel bad about it. You're getting a head start. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. With all that being said, sorry I rambled on that too long. Let's get down to what Ja Morant, he said. This is referring to the incident where he was flashing the tool, the heater, the blicky in the club. Quote unquote, I take full responsibility for my actions last night. I'm sorry to my family, teammates, coaches, fans, partners, the city of Memphis, and the entire Grizzlies organization for letting you down. I'm going to take some time away to get help and work on learning better methods of dealing with stress and my overall well-being. I like that. It was nice, short, and simple, and he got to the point. In a situation like John Morant's in, and I'm wishing this guy the best of luck, don't think otherwise, there's not really anything else to say. You just gotta apologize, say I'm working on it, and yeah, let your actions speak for themselves. But in every situation like this, me being 100% completely honest with y'all, I take this quote you're seeing right here with a grain of salt. I don't care. Your actions in this life will always speak louder than your words. I don't care what you say. I want to see you do it. I want to see you prove it. To follow that up, here's where things really, and I mean really, start to get interesting. And this is what I personally think is going to have to happen before Job Morant actually takes all this serious. Nike, yes, Nike, the huge company, they released this statement. Remember, Nike and John Morant, they got a partnership. We appreciate John's accountability in that he has taken the time to get the help he needs. We support his prioritization, I believe that's how I say that, whatever, of his well-being. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I know what you're saying. They're saying, well, man, that's no big deal whatsoever. They didn't say they're going to drop them. But here's my point on this. They're at least speaking about it to the public. This kind of feels like a warning shot from Nike to John Morant, but it's indirectly. They're saying, hey, John Morant, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. We like you're getting some help, but you mess up again, you're gone. I've seen a lot of people in the comments talking about, oh, well, they're keeping John Morant, but got rid of Kyrie in a heartbeat, and I'm not even going to get into that. That is a completely different conversation, a different video for a different day. Continuing to go along here, here's where things get even more interesting. Paul Pierce, yes. Believe it or not, out of all people to speak on this, Paul Pierce, here's what he had to say. I don't care what y'all say about Ja. I carried a gun after I was stabbed. Y'all don't know what he going through. Everybody got something to say until you really know what's going on in someone's life. When you black and rich, you a target, period. Not too sure why he had to say black and rich. You could have just said rich. Here's my counter argument to Paul Pierce, and it's the argument I tried telling you guys in the previous video. I don't care that Ja Morant, he was strapped. I get it. You gotta stay strapped. You gotta do what you gotta do to feel safe. My problem is he posted it on social media. It's okay to stay strapped, but why are you flexing it? That's my biggest thing, and it goes back to John Morant being the cornball legend himself. He just wants validation from other people that he's a thug. John Morant, you're not a thug. You make $200 million a year. Nobody views you as a gangster. And you guys want to know what's really sad about this? I think John Morant is a great and humble, nice young man. I'm not just saying that to say that. I mean it. I followed up on him when he was in high school and at college at Murray State. This guy, when he talked in interviews and everything, he was really nice. But now it seems like since he's been really successful, and he's making all this money, his ego is completely taken over. And look, I get it. As a man myself, you have to have an ego in this life or people are going to walk all over you. You got to have an ego. It's not a bad thing. If you don't have an ego, people are going to push you around. However, you got to tone it down, John Morant. And to a certain degree, on a very small scale, I can relate to John Morant, and I'm sure many of you can as well. I've been in the situation where I'm coming off of a 30-point game and I go to high school the next day and you got all the girls going to your locker and you got all the teachers and students hyping you up. You start to feel pretty good about yourself and you get this ego and you get so prideful where you feel like not just on the basketball court or the baseball or football field but everywhere in your life, every aspect, you can't be stopped. And for my athletes out there, y'all understand it. If you've ever had a baseball game, also played baseball, if you go four for four with three doubles, yeah, that ride home, it feels amazing. My football players, if you have 200 receiving yards in a game, 150 rushing yards, you know how it goes. Your ego starts to come out. So me and you and everybody watching this, to a certain degree and extent, we can relate to John Morant. But the problem with John Morant is on a scale of one to 10, one being the humblest guy of all time, 10 being a straight up a-hole, 
10 is where his ego's at. And going back to this, someone said, money doesn't change you, it exposes more of who you are. Yes, you're also right. Although I think money should change you because you should start hanging out with other people that are making a lot of money and they're very successful. It also amplifies who you are. If you're a nice guy, you get money, it's gonna make you nicer. If you're an a-hole, you get money, it's gonna make you an even bigger a-hole. I don't believe John Morant's an a-hole though. That's the sad part about it. I think he's a nice guy. And last but not least, this is the last thing I'm gonna say and we're gonna end out the video. In high school and at college at Murray State when he was making that insane March Madness run, everybody liked this guy. He was the fan favorite. He was right up there with Lamella Ball. Everybody adored him. But now, fast forward in time, only a few years later, I'd say it's split 60-40. 60% don't like this guy. They think he's weird. 40% like him. And that's me being generous. At this point in time, it's probably 75-25. Only 25% like him now. We're seeing a young man who I think is a great young man deep down, self-destruct, live in current time. We've reached the point where people are tweeting stuff out like this. It's getting over 5 million views. They're really calling John Morant private school gangster. I mean, look at this guy. He looks like a cool dude. And y'all don't even know. I already know people are going to make fun of this fit. But back in the day, this was the fit. I think John Morant's older than me. Let me check real quick. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Morant, he is slightly older than me, but not by much. Back when we was growing up, me and John Morant, if you wore this to school, you was that guy. Y'all don't even know about the high socks with the khaki pants and wearing like J's or something like that. This was the fit, but nowadays if you wore that, yeah, I'm definitely roasting you. That's just, it can't happen. I'm not too sure the time frame of people that can relate to this. I'm going to say if you're from the ages 19 to about 28, do y'all remember that era where wearing basketball shoes with khaki pants? That was a fit. For example, one of the greatest shoes of all time that everybody was wearing with jeans and khakis was the KD6s more in particular. I just remember everybody trying to wear the KD6 peanut butter and jellies. Man, oh man, what a time to be alive. Now, the Grizzlies have said they're suspending John Morant for two games, but now the newest of new updates is that John Morant is to be away from the Grizzlies indefinitely. No timetable for his return. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where things start to get really, and I mean really interesting, because originally he was just supposed to be suspended for two games but now it's indefinitely and to be honest i don't think it's a good thing for him to be away from basketball because that's what was keeping him out of trouble now he's got all this free time so i just hope it isn't a bad thing i hope he uses it to actually get better i hope he turns it around for his sake i'm sure we'll talk more about this when we'll it up there let me know your thoughts down below but uh